Infinity FX50. This one here is a sport model, fully loaded with the technology package. And that part means that the left knee bolster is going to have a lot of buttons. Many buttons with many letters. DCA, FCW, LDW, AFS, VDC, IBA, ETC. Well, obviously this one here is not a very mysterious one. This one's got a lot to do with your side mirrors. But in today's video, I'll be trying to make sense of the alphabet soup that makes up the technology package in the 2009 and up Infinity FXs. I'll be talking about these features here all except the VDC because I believe that the stability systems do deserve their own discussion, you know, uh, not marred by anything else. And I do have a video on that system. So in making this video possible or even the technology possible, um, we'll talk about some sensors. Obviously you need sensors for technology. One of the more obvious ones is when you come to the front windshield and you see the brow here has a cutout in it and what's there looks like a camera lens. It is a camera. That is your camera for the lane departure systems, LDW and LDP, lane departure warning and lane departure prevention. Might as well talk about this. So this is the middle rear view mirror and that right there is your rain sensor. When you come to the front of the vehicle, this is less, less evident, but it is the most important sensor really. So get low where the grill area would be right here. There is a black box. And this one here is, it's pretty rugged. It's, it's not sonar, it's not radar, it's not laser. I think it is lighter, but I might be a little off on the technology. Please forgive me if I am. But that one is the most important thing because it makes all these other distance related features possible. And that means, you know, anything to do with distance. This one, the camera up here, it's this one right here. The camera up there, get uh deals with putting you on the side the other one at the bottom is how far you are from the cars in front of you or from wrecking something and one thing i'd like to talk about whenever i do such videos is that these are just convenient they are safety systems they're convenience features at the end of the day you are going to be responsible for anything that happens when you're behind the wheel so as much as they make life easier never let it all leave it all up to them you still need to be attentive on the road and need to make sure that you are doing your part to avoid accidents. Okay. So I hope by the end of this um, compilation of videos, I'll be just mixing clips into, you know, to the rest of this, you'll be able to one, enjoy your, uh, your car more, or maybe you've got beeps and things like that, that annoy you and you'll be able to have better control over your vehicle and enjoy your driving experience. Okay, so I hope the next 20 minutes or so of your life is going to be pretty useful. Okay, all the best guys. The lane departure warning system is on as you can see over there. And what that does is when I veer off my lane, it's going to beep and give me a visual indicator over there. So let's see this. Oh, this is a good opportunity. I'm not going to veer. I'll actually just change lanes without using the turn signal. There you go. Let's do it again. Watch inside here. I'll be jumping back to the right side. And you get that visual indicator. So a step further is a lane departure prevention system. Well, I guess sometimes it gets a little too sensitive in certain areas. So lane departure prevention, this one right here, turn it on. Watch that icon in there. I'll do it again. On it goes. So this time, when I try to veer off the left, watch what happens. It's gonna bring me back. Right now, you can't tell, but it's breaking. It stopped me from going all the way. It's breaking and bringing me back. You know, it just depends on... Look, it's bringing me back to the, to the center, to my course. And another thing is that this system, I'll turn it off. Lane departure warning and lane departure prevention only work above a certain uh, certain speed. So if I stayed below 40 miles an hour, I think 40 is a magical number. I'll have to check that. And I try to use it, it just won't tell me anything. Obviously, not just that, but if the lens is also dirty, it's not gonna do anything for it. So let's see this. Let me get over here try to reduce my speed drastically and then let's see what happens so right now I'm keeping it under 30 and I'm going to change lanes 
but first I have to make sure I'm at a spot where the car, the lens, uh, the camera can actually see the line markers. Sometimes the lane markers are not visible. So here we go. Keep it under 40, then switch lanes. Just see if it beeps. Okay. Was definitely above 40, but I, I was trying to remember what that number is, but there you go. It doesn't work below a certain speed. We might as well test the other system that's lit up over there for collision warning. And what that does is if it notices that I'm approaching the, uh, the vehicle close to me a little too fast, I'm traveling faster than the other one and it doesn't seem like I'm stopping, it's going to beep. Like that. <laughs> Sorry, sorry if anyone's getting like mini heart attacks doing all this, but just wanted to show you what's going on. I'd like to show the next feature, and for this, I'm actually gonna turn off the lane departure warning. So let's get this button off, and let's hit the next button, which is DCA, this one right here. Distance control assist. And let me show you what happens when I hit the DCA button. Okay, let's turn it on. That's all you get. Again, just one push of the button. It shows you a car icon, the icon of a vehicle in front of you, and also shows you the uh, letters DCA. And the DCA system works in three ways. One, well, the main purpose is to keep a certain following distance with the vehicle in front of you. So it, it gives you three different operation uh, indicators, is what I call. It's got the visual, right? The icon and the letters, and two, it, it's, it uses a sensor to determine the, sp uh, the distance between you and the car in front of you. It's not a speed control, it's a distance control. And what it does is that it senses the speed of the car in front of you and your speed, and it does, it, it mitigates, or rather it controls the speed in two ways. One, it starts braking for you, applies about maybe a quarter of the power, braking power available, and two, it also pulls back on the on the gas pedal, on the accelerator pedal. So right now we'll be testing and I think I saw someone pull out in front of this vehicle and I'm not, foot, yeah, right now it's braking itself. My foot's not on the brake at all. It's braking itself because it's keeping a safe distance between me and the guy in front. Obviously you can override it if you wanted to. You could override it by just pushing on the gas. I can get closer. Look at this distance over here. So again, my foot's only on the gas, but I can feel the resistance, and I am sorry that I, there's no other way I can show you that resistance happening. There. <laughs> That's the other thing about DCA. I think that was a really good one. Yes, it does its best to keep the, the distance, but then, as I said, it's only about 25% of the available braking power, and what it does, it, it just helps you. It pre pre-brakes for you so you can't feel the brake pedal I mean you'll feel it a little softer I guess because it drops call it 25% drop in but then the gas pedal you can feel it push against you but one you can keep pushing the gas pedal it just feel harder and then you can bypass all that braking that it's doing but two it's never going to stop you from an accident and like you could see back there if I hadn't if I hadn't been paying attention I would have ended up hitting something all right so that's it and again watch this I'm not braking right now it's braking itself foot off brake foot off brake <laughs> see that yeah there, then it'll come to a stop actually watch watch then it's gonna beep like take over take over <laughs> There you go. <laughs> when it beeps, you have to be ready and take over, you know, break for myself. So I think that's a pretty, pretty good uh, um, explanation of the DCA system, uh, distance control assist. And what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and just turn it off. After discussing those features, I would also like to inform you that in, in later years, Infinity took this button away. Basically, the distance control assist feature was combined with the lane departure prevention feature in this button right here. So they had a different button and I will 
that switch, I will try to get a picture of it and add it to this video so you can see how that switch looked like. But being that this is a 2009, you have the, your lane departure prevention here and your distance control assist here. And in different vehicles, they had the lane departure warning by itself, the forward collision warning, and there were selectable menu items so you could go to your to, uh, to your screen over there and then just turn something off turn something on and change sensitivity and things like that we'll jump up to the next level which is iba and iba is intelligent brake assist so this one right here so it's the, I need to uh, explain this. IBA, just like your uh, VDC, Vehicle Dynamic Control System, is one of those default on systems in that it's always on whenever, you know, it's always on whenever you turn on the car. However, the switch allows you to turn it off, right? And I think these are those like default off switches, VDC off and default on switches. So you have VDC off and IBA off as well so let's turn that off and iba is not like just a push i can't just turn it off like that right i have to hold it down and then it turns off like that so here you go i have to hold down to turn it back on and this is what happens after i hold it down for a while to turn it off there you go iba off so iba off this is the the challenge about the IBA system is that the IBA system is always working, right? Unless I don't want it to work, right? So I'm basically, and the IBA, the difference between IBA and DCA is this. Distance control assist, its purpose is to keep a certain distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. IBA, the purpose of intelligent brake assist is to Again, just like DCA, never stops any accidents from happening, but it slows down the speed of the accident, if that makes sense. So watch this. I've turned IBA off right now, and I want to know, because the sensor is still working, it's just taking away that ability, and the only way for me to actually prove that um, the IBA system works is to actually get into a wreck. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. The other system that might be worth talking about is the cruise, the cruise control function. So you know no standard cruise, right? Um, first, it's usually speed limited. It has a bottom limit and a top limit, so you can't just cruise at 120 miles an hour unless you do something to your system. But what we do is this. If you want to cruise at, let's set the speed, just go down, right? And it says set, it doesn't really tell me what the speed is, but it says it's set, so I trust that it is set. And I'm bumping it up right now. Little by little, it's going up, right? But if I don't watch, I possibly could end up hitting that person, but I have the IBA system. I don't want to test that really, so let me turn off the cruise. I was getting a little too close, even I didn't like that. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the cruise and I will show you what the intelligent cruise control works like. So once again, just go ahead and turn on the cruise control button. And see the difference is that now it's got those arrows over there and I'm gonna change. That is usually how far do I want to, uh, the distance between me and the car in front of me. So when I touch this, see what happens. So I'm gonna go one step, just just like setting standard cruise, just go down to set your speed. And this time it tells you what your speed is. So I can increase the speed, but let me reduce the distance so I can get closer. <laughs> it's an interesting combination or dance thing you have to do. Oh, there's a cop in front there. That's what's going on. Need to reduce for the cop. Well, so I braked and that stopped it, but let's do this bump my speed resume it's 60 that person is going slower than 60 so it's gonna slow down and that person is gonna leave and it's gonna bump up speed again so that's that's what intelligent cruise does it keeps a certain distance between you and the person in front of you but at the same time well let's put it like this you have a set speed 
but at the same time, he keeps a distance between you and the guy in front of you. So if that guy ends up slowing down, you end up slowing down, okay? So the question is, how do you make it operate normally? Because, you know, you might not want it to do the intelligent cruise stuff. Because honestly, sometimes it gets annoying because depending on the um, on the person in front of you, how fast they're going, the system sometimes gets a little trippy and it might start sensing ghost things or just going around bends and gets a little weirded out. So what you do is this, turn this off and during startup, just hold this down for it's usually, yeah, one and a half seconds, typically. Then you can just do it cruising like normal. And as you can see, all it does is just set. Let's do this again, okay? Standard uh, default. There you go, that's what it looks like. But if you want to, to do the other, the traditional cruise, just hold it down, and this is what you see. It disappears. So, that's it. I, I hope that makes sense. While down here, another feature I could discuss is this button over here, AFS. It's an adaptive front lighting system. I suppose AFLS wasn't going to roll off the tongue quite as elegantly. It's not like AFS is also that easy to say. Afs, afols. No. <laughs> I tickle myself sometimes. So this one right here, um, it's got two elements to it. One, and I'm sorry, it's daytime, so I can't really show it very well. But if I get a chance, maybe in the, at night I'd record another video. But you can turn this off or on, and this is what it looks like, off, on. When you turn your car on, it's one of those systems that as soon as you touch the button, it gives you a warning system. So just so you know. So let's turn it off again and see what happens. Right? AFS off, right? It warns you. AFS system uses... Um, a, level, a height sensor in the back and the height sensor senses whether you've overloaded your vehicle basically how you know what's your how low your rear is going to be it's the front doesn't really dip much but it kind of looks at what you do with your rear right so that when you have very heavy loads your rear is going to do this and at that point it's assuming that your headlights are facing into the sky so it's got with a motor two motors right one in each headlight it's going to tilt the headlights down and likewise if for whatever reason you raise the rear end up it's going to assume that your headlights are facing the ground so it's going to raise your headlights and that's something that usually happens maybe not so much with the fx but with the sedans when you lower the the uh the suspension front and rear sometimes your headlights just end up doing something totally different they're not Headlight, they're not aimed the way they're supposed to be. There is a manual override, obviously. But the second part of the AFS system, this is a part that many people know the AFS system to work for, is that it uses your steering angle sensor to know that you're turning, you know, right or left. And it also turns your headlights, you know, to the left and to the right. It depends. If you're turning right, it turns your right headlight to eliminate your you know, assuming just uh, see around a corner a little better. And then when you're turning left, it turns the left headlight that way so that you can see it. It's, this is a part that sucks. Sometimes even doing it, not doing it at night, it's hard to see. So I'll do my best to actually show it during the day because now I can actually see the lens moving. And again, it'll be just the best I can do because the left one, doesn't start working until you're going like 16 miles an hour but the right one as long as you have your uh, your car in D the right one should be working at any time so I'll see if I can get some of that I'll try to get some help for this and then um, record that so for this next test I need to turn off the car first to tell you what I'll be doing what all I'm gonna be doing is turning the steering wheel turn it to the right turn it to the left and I think I have the angle of the camera I will have the angle of the camera set up so that you'll see the wheel turning to the right and to the left that's all I'm gonna do turn the light on then I'll turn the light off and you'll see the difference that makes